Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Ha, <laughs> ah, I, was, I was just thinking, I was gonna call this a Bothrop Sincellaris, but that's a totally different uh, creature. Uh, this is the Cryptolytrop Sincellaris, the blue form. Um, it's found on many of the islands in Indonesia. Um, and this is a male that came in and he's pretty rough uh, you know he's got all these uh, skin problems and things like that I mean okay there, that's part of a, a shedding issue but over here on this side he's actually move, look, missing a scale when he shed this damaged area and we think it's a fungus or something like that uh, actually pulled the scale off during the shedding process uh, and uh, you know sort of left a hole in his side that I filled with uh, Neosporin uh, but a friend of mine Kara uh, who's very good uh, at snake husbandry and actually is far more experienced with me uh, on the blue insularis gave me a couple of tips in how to treat them so um, we have uh, chlorhexidine uh, this happens to come from CVS pharmacy because they're close and available you can buy it in bulk and stuff and what we're gonna do is if I had the bulk stuff that I could dilute down in warm water I'd make a bath for them but all I have is uh, this 4% solution and not even very much of it may be you know a quarter of a bottle so I really can't dilute it down and uh, properly and and make a, a 3% solution from the four because uh, it just the math just doesn't add up so what, what Lori's gonna do is I'm gonna restrain him and uh, uh, she's going to wipe them down with chlorhexidine on a, a piece of paper towel and uh, and then at the end um, uh, I'm going to pull his head out and maybe Lori will grab, grab a couple q-tips and I'll q-tip uh, uh, his head and, and face and stuff uh, uh, at four percent strength it's a little uh, strong. Uh, the St. Louis Zoo uses chlorhexidine in their uh, snake buckets when they pull snakes out to let them chill, so to speak, while the cage is being serviced. Uh, the 3% chlorhexidine in water, according to the vets there, are perfectly safe for the snakes to eat. So they're not terribly worried about them drinking the chlorhexidine uh, at three percent so just a note for you folks if you want a good disinfectant uh, uh, that you can put in your your snake uh, safe buckets uh, while you uh, clean your cages uh, it's perfectly safe to throw them in the chlorhexidine it cleans their skin gets all bacteria and parasites off uh, but one of the things that the St. Louis Zoo really likes about it is the fact that uh, they don't have to empty it out and clean it unless the snake defecates in it. They can just take the snake out that's in there and throw the next snake in and not worry about cross-contaminating snakes. So uh, I think we're ready to go here. So I'm going to uh, uh, attempt to tube this little blighter. Hi dude. Yeah, I know. We oh, we went through this yesterday. I see you already. You already know the know the the trick here, huh? Oh, come on, come on. Don't waste uh, any energy. I know that was probably not pleasant for you either. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, what are you leaving venom on my tube for? Well, it's better than leaving it in my arm. Ha 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 ha. All right. Okay. Come on. Come on. Put your nose in there. 
Go peacefully. Come on. Come on. Either that or I have to pin you right away. I mean, I don't want to do that because uh, we can get most of your body done without having uh, to worry about your head. Go ahead, sweetheart. You're, you're good. Just from my fingers on aft, just uh, wrap it around them and sort of slide it down. Careful you don't slide him out into my fingers. And just leave a nice uh, coating. And I think we're going to probably do this with the three females also as a preventative thing. Pulled this head out. Hello. Yeah, I know you're a cute little pit viper. You know, when they come out of the wild like this, they're they're loaded with parasites, uh, both uh, bad ones and uh, uh, things that uh, uh, that are in their system that you really don't. I know. Well, I'm not going to get it on your eyes, okay? I'll get it on your little snout, though. Huh? Yeah. Come on. Now, this will be tricky doing the rest of the neck. Getting that little spot where you hold the skin. This is tricky. This is tricky. How do you do this without getting bit? You can go ahead and bite that. That's perfectly okay. That's perfectly okay. I know. You want to get that head around to bite me, huh? Okay. Okay. We're good. I'm going to let him go. I think he's, uh, he's been abused enough. Aw, poor guy. Yeah, he's pretty weak. Come on, dude. Yeah. Well, hi there. Would you like a drink? You would like to bite me. Would you like a drink? I'll give you a drink before I really piss you off. Huh? You want a drink? No? Not interested in a drink? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that'll probably work. That's a dirty tube, so yeah. let's not put that back on the shelf. Now, with this gal being bigger, and having a lot more juice in those glands. Yeah. Um, she's more of a green than a blue. But, you know, her face is sort of blue. But, you know, I don't know where she is in the shedding cycle. Uh, she's definitely yeah. taking a liking to you. Yes, I see that. Uh, is that lump on her side a, a parasite? Yep. It's yeah. probably a worm under there. Yeah. I mean, you know, I can open it up and pull the worm out and stuff, but there's probably... 10,000 more somewhere Ooh. in there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's why Brian was saying that he he worms his snakes with ivernectin. Um, but he doesn't really care how many he loses along the way. Uh, I try to preserve the life of every snake. Uh, uh, so I won't use ivermectin. Ivermectin is very toxic to snakes. You have to get the dosage spot on uh, or you have a dead snake. Yes, it does work. It does kill uh, the parasites, uh, but it does kill snakes too. So to me, um, I'd rather live with the parasites than to uh, live with the fact that I overdosed the snake and it died. Right? Eh? Now I hate to disturb these guys, you know, my method of operation here is uh, if the snake is feeding, it will be fine. It will survive the, the parasite load and I can take care of it uh, uh, for the most part just by oral uh, uh, drugs that would, uh, would take care of that because I can inject that in the food. The food gets digested, the, the anti-worm drug gets in their system and it kills off the parasites rather than, uh, uh, you know, injecting them and having to weigh them and worrying about uh, everything else. But, 
you know, again, just like the young male, this one doesn't have, apparently, lots of skin problems like, like the male does. This is a female. Um, but I'm not going to take any chance because this is a relatively benign procedure. It's actually more dangerous for me and Mrs. Viper Keeper than it is the snake. Uh, so, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, their skin is sort of detoxed um, and I don't have to, to worry about it. Don't you love this uh, genus? They're very friendly. Yeah. <laughs> Come on over, say hi. Okay. okay. I've got this ready to go. Okay, well, she's got her mouth ready to go, too. <laughs> so we're going to attempt. Ah, we're going to bite the tube. You're not sticking that tube in my face. The last guy I met in the wild tried to stick a tube in my face. See, tubing is a mixed bag. Sometimes it works really, really well, and sometimes it doesn't. So, it's not working very well here. So, what I'm going to try, and I'll have Mrs. Viper Keeper just grab the camera so she can follow me, is uh, the next uh, trick for uh, getting them into the tube is you put them in the bucket. Okay, and what happens is uh, a lot of times they try to climb out of the bucket. So they're naturally going up and sometimes you can get them to come up the tube. <laughs> you know, it's it's not a pogo stick, so it's not trying to fly around like a uh, uh, a balloon that you just blew up and let go without tying it. Oh, man, that bulb didn't last long. Yeah, I saw that flicker and go out. Uh, you know, bit. I'm really irritated at the folks at ZooMed. Their their basking light bulbs are crap, and uh, they go out. Uh, some of them, very few, maybe 10% that I use here last more than a year. The rest last less than a year. In this case, this is, when was this put in? Not long ago. I, I usually mark when they go in. You're not liking this either. See now, the disadvantage of this is once the head goes in, I've got to reach down into a very confined space and hope that she doesn't pull it out. Mm. This way is not working either. See, as a, as a venomous snake husbandry person, you have to have a multitude of tricks up your sleeve so you can uh, actually, uh, you know, because not every trick works on every snake. You know, they're not as dumb and food-oriented as forest culvers, and you can't always get them <laughs> to go down the tube, into the bucket, uh, into the bag and stuff. So, uh, there is no, well, there is sort of a last resort. Um, I could use my uh, mason's trowel with a sponge on it and pin her, um, but I'm thinking if, she doesn't cooperate and go in the tube, I'm just going to grab her by the head and restrain her, uh, which always works. I think she's a lot healthier than the male, so I don't think it'll stress her so much. No, I don't want to go in the tube. Okay, so finally she made the mistake of shitting all over me. Sorry, folks. Uh, <laughs> um, excuse me. Uh, uh, finally, she put her head in the tube is what I was trying to say. And, uh, okay, go ahead. And she decided to uh, musk and spray it all around. Which, 
isn't really good considering I have to work with Elvis later and that's probably like a love potion for him. Mm. Oh, God, that's nasty. You know, the, the nice thing about snakes is they're unlike, you know, your, your common furry household pets is you know they're not going to be licking each other trying to clean this off. Yeah, their tongue will come in contact with it. Here, get up here close to my, where my fingers are. And then we'll do uh, the rest of her. Okay, so yes, I know, I know. Your biting system is getting ready for action here. Okay, okay, relax. There we go. Oh, how happy. How happy. Okay. Now usually what I'll do is I'll give her something to occupy her fangs. No, wait. Body first. Let me do the body first. No, I need it all unfolded. Don't be oozing. Okay, now Q-tip. Like I was saying, I give them something to bite into that they're not going to get hurt with. You know, they're not going to hurt their mouth. I don't ever, hardly ever, ever have to stick something, you know, like a pair of tongs or... Ew, that's nasty, Mr. Viper Keeper. I don't stick metal in their mouth because I don't want them to hurt their mouth and get an infection. And then I have to worry about... Uh, uh, you know, uh, treating that infection. So I try to be as friendly as I can as possible. Stop! You're biting your lower jaw. Come on, let go. Come on. Usually what I like to use, if I can get it, is I have these cheap sponges. A big sponge from like uh, the dollar store, a bag of them costs a dollar. Come on, let go, disengage. Disengage, there we go. Um, cost a dollar. And you wet the sponge down and you put the... Uh, uh, you put some water on it, you let them bite down, and then it's nice and comfy and it keeps their fangs and their teeth in the same place, doesn't hurt their mouth, uh, so that's basically what I use. I'm going to pause the camera and go get the, the next one. That's a big girl. And you don't look too happy. Did I wake you up? She was sleeping in the corner, uh, sort of out of the way. Um, not with the other two, which meant that she was probably sleeping. Yeah. Wait now. Maybe I should have acted sooner and tooter. Hi. Now, tubing can be dangerous, and people have gotten bit trying to tube. Most notably, my friend Jim Harrison with the Bothrops that I loaned him for his Venom line uh, leaped over the hook in the tube and bit him on the wrist. Lots of little bumps on you. Yeah. very nice of you. There she goes, musking. It's a trap. Okay. Uh, watch your sneakers. Ew. Okay. 
it's so well. <laughs> biting the tube really hard. When it goes clickety clack in the tube, you know she's biting hard. Okay, I've got her head. If you can get me a clean blue towel from up on top there, I'll uh, roll that up and let her bite into it. I know your tongue is looking for my finger. Thanks. Here, try that. Oh, oh, savage. Okay. Now, go ahead. I got the head and stuff. Give me, give me a uh, a towel to get the rest of her. Just yeah, she's trying to pull her head out on the corner of the table there. So as soon as you get me the juice, uh, control her tail so she has nothing to uh, grab onto for leverage. Ah, that's a thing of beauty. Okay. <laughs> now let's make her head all slippery so Viper Keeper's fingers can slip all over the place. Actually, this is better than the Q-tips when her fangs, when the fangs are not in play, it makes it a lot easier to work with. Okay. We have a very slippery Cryptolytrops and Solaris. Uh, now I'm just going to take her down like this and toss her in the bin. As unhappy as she wants to be there. Okay, here we are with the third female I have. All this doesn't matter if that lone male kicks the bucket. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to try to locate a male at a reasonable price, which isn't necessarily so easy. How you doing? Huh? You ready to spar? Huh? You ready to spar? I'm sure you are. Okay, so let's see how cooperative you are getting into the tube. Not so cooperative. There, I was thinking that maybe this would be okay with her under the table like that, but no. Nope. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Snake almost landed in my lap. Snakes can fly through the air with the greatest of ease, people. You just don't know. Matter of fact, you know, to give it the snake the low profile that I like because it's not threatening to them is actually pretty threatening to me because they can be out and in my lap hardly before I can react. We'll do the slow millimeter movements and see if... Nope. The problem is you can't move it slowly and smoothly at the same time. No, 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 no. You know, you need a clear tube to see exactly where the head is, but at the same time, with a clear tube, they can see what you're doing on the outside of the tube. They're not dumb. Okay, just watch the back end because it will probably musk. Yep. Let's make the vipers very slippery for Viper Keeper to uh, try to manipulate. Oh, yeah. That's what I like. Okay, so slow. Ah, uh, got me. 
Yeah. Well, you were milking her I like did. that. You were milking the wrong end. Okay, yeah. so here's something for you to bite on, other than my fingers. There you go. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ah. Okay. Ah, uh, stop it. She's got plenty of goo, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've got her right to the neck. You can run your hands down her upper body to her, to her neck and on her scutes as she shoots more goo. Okay, that's good. And then you can give me a, a wet uh, paper towel and I can rub on top of the head. It's sort of good that they're sort of squinting and can't really see what I'm doing. <laughs> That's a bit helpful. Uh oh, no. We're not ready for you to release your grip there, young lady. Okay. I always get the fun in. You want to take the pointy end? <laughs> I realized as I said that, oops! <laughs> no, I guess not. All right, I get the nasty end. <laughs> okay. I have the fun end. You have the nasty end. Okay, that's all folks. Uh, off to the next uh, set of animals to care for.